In this video, we are going to discuss a basic principle on irrigation water management that has the potential for profound impact on water use in production agriculture. That is the topic of managing irrigation to maximize profits. Standard irrigation management practices typically manage for maximized yield, mitigated risk, water delivery capacity, or some combination of these parameters. At the heart of this principle is the concept of efficiency. Efficiency is the measure of how well an input is converted to a desired output. We commonly think of examples such as miles per gallon, or in irrigation pumping scenarios in terms of energy used per unit of water pumped. By definition, more efficient systems perform an equal or greater portion of work with less inputs. Specifically relating to irrigation, we commonly refer to application efficiency to qualify the merits of irrigation systems. We use water use efficiency to reference crop yield abilities with relation to water, and pumping plant efficiency to evaluate the conversion of energy to usable water. As important as all of these individual efficiencies are, they are only secondary efficiencies. The final and most important measure of efficiency is that of profit per acre. It is the cumulative measure of success for any business, irrigated agriculture notwithstanding. Profit is very simply expressed by this equation, total revenue minus total expenses. In agricultural production settings, we maximize the revenue by increasing yield, and we minimize expenses by controlling our inputs. In production agriculture, yield is directly related to the inputs. Therefore, it takes solid management decisions to optimize profits. The practice we are discussing is valid for all cropping system inputs, but is very obvious for irrigation management for multiple reasons. If we look at grain corn in the Texas North Plains, irrigation often represents the single largest budget item up to 30 percent of production costs in some years. It is the one input that has the greatest effect on yield. It directly affects the return of all other inputs and it is manageable throughout the season. The backbone of our analysis is this graph which is commonly referred to as a production function. This production function demonstrates the expected grain yield as a function of total seasonal water applied. The numbers on the x-axis represent a combination of irrigation, soil storage of off-season precipitation, and in-season rainfall. For grain corn in the Texas North Plains, it is very evident that additional water added provides an increase in yield almost linearly until the genetic yield potential of the crop is reached. At this point, the yield plateaus with additional water and then begins to decrease. The decrease is caused most commonly by saturation effects that hinder the soil oxygen water balance in the plant root zone. This is commonly referred to as water logging. In this case, the peak yield occurs on the far side of the plateau at about 33 inches of total seasonal water or roughly 23 inches of applied irrigation water. If we take the information from the production function and analyze it for incremental yield gain per inch of water applied, we see that each subsequent inch of water after about 20 inches returns a less significant incremental yield than the previous inch. This is referred to as the law of diminishing returns, just like basic economics. The peak of this curve occurs at about 20 inches. This is the point of maximum water use efficiency. Production agriculture is not, however, paid on the margin of water use efficiency. The production function and incremental yield information takes on a very meaningful shape when combined with an honest crop budget. This curve shown makes use of budget data extracted from the 2010 Texas AgriLife Extension Service cropping budget to demonstrate incremental profit values for each subsequent inch of water. The most profitable use of the water resource 
incrementally occurs at 24 inches of total water. In years of low input costs and high commodity prices, this point will move toward the max yield point. In years with high input costs and low commodity prices, this point will shift left on the curve toward minimum inputs. Again, however, crop production success is not measured by incremental indicators. In order to completely apply profit-based irrigation management, we must look at our management comprehensively on a profit per acre basis, our final measure of efficiency. In the Texas North Plains, the profit per acre per inch of water curve is very symmetrical about the maximum profit point of 28 inches of total water applied. If you will recall, the maximum yield occurs at 33 inches of total water applied. Take home point number one of this principle is that maximum profit will always occur at some yield point lower than the maximum due to the law of diminishing returns. In this case, the maximum profit point required 5 inches less water than the maximum yield point and offered a profit increase of nearly $50 per acre. Take home point number two is that in the Texas North Plains, the irrigation requirement to maximize profit on grain corn is typically between 14 to 18 inches annually. It cannot be overstated at this point that irrigation management and application timing are very critical when targeting these specific irrigation levels. The final take home point on this topic is that there are multiple points on this curve that correspond to the same profit level. This dispels the common thought that an extra inch of water is cheap insurance. In many cases, the extra inch of water applied may not only prove to decrease profit, but may even work to decrease yields. If we look again at the profit per acre per inch of water curve, we see that the same profit level attained targeting maximum yield is feasibly met using 10 inches less irrigation water. Irrigating to meet the peak profit point, or to the left of the peak profit point, will ensure that the water resource is used in the most effective and responsible way, promoting sustainable, economically sound production agriculture. This video is delivered by cooperative support and funding from the Texas AgriLife Extension Service, the Ogallala Aquifer Project, and the Texas Water Development Board.